This is Bishop George Murray. On behalf of your Catholic friends and neighbors in the Diocese of Youngstown, I invite you to join us for this celebration of the Holy Mass. Good morning and welcome to our celebration of Holy Mass. Today is the second Sunday of Easter, Sunday of Divine Mercy. Our celebrant is Father James Corda, the pastoral director of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. I'm Barb Zorn from St. Columba Cathedral and Holy Family Parish in Poland. As we pray this Mass, let us remember in our prayers Tina Bush. Hail the day that sees him rise, alleluia. To his throne above the skies, alleluia. Christ the Lamb for sinners kin, alleluia. Now ascends the highest heaven, alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. It's nice to be with you this morning as we gather to celebrate God's presence in word, in sacrament, and also within us. So together let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and, and to, to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I, I have, have greatly sinned, sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us join the angels in their hymn of praise. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on, on earth, earth peace, peace to people, people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, you we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, God heavenly King, King, O God, God Almighty Father, Father Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people esteemed them. Yet more than ever, believers in the Lord, great numbers of men and women were added to them. Thus they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. 
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give, Give thanks, thanks to, to the Lord, Lord for he is good. good. His, his love, love is everlasting. everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his mercy endures forever. Give, Give thanks, thanks to, to the Lord, Lord for, for he is good. His, his love, love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give, Give thanks, thanks to, to the Lord, for he is good. His, his love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give, Give thanks, thanks to, to the Lord, Lord for he is good. His, His love, love is everlasting. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet which said, write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands and in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, wearing an ankle-length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen and what is happening and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are they who have not seen me, but still believe. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, o Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, 
and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be believing, unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, our Gospel reading for today is the story about a person who started with doubt and ended with faith. His name was Thomas. The Christian world knows him as Doubting Thomas, but that is only half true. He was also a person of deep and profound faith. Now, some people may see that as a contradiction because we tend to think of doubt and faith as complete opposites. But sometimes they really can be consecutive steps in the same process. I believe that such was a case with St. Thomas. He started with honest doubt and ended with a solid faith. Let's face it, we all have areas of doubt. You know, this Christian faith of ours is not simply a creed to be memorized and mastered in 10 easy lessons. It is instead a far-reaching faith that dares to deal with those giant issues that have baffled people across the centuries. Life and its meaning, God and our relationship with him, right and wrong, personal righteousness and social justice, suffering and death, eternity and immortality. In this life, we will never answer all of the questions of doubt or solve all of the mysteries of our faith. I believe that the capacity to doubt can be one of our most noble attributes. Now, if you question that assertion, think for a moment in the realm of science. Galileo, the Italian astronomer and physicist, called doubt the father of discovery. We can all remember the term incurable diseases, but today that term has almost dropped out of existence. There was a day when all cancers were classified as incurable diseases. Those who contracted cancer were given up for lost. That is not always the case today. In most cases, when caught early, cancer is one of the most curable diseases. The reason is that many scientists and researchers doubted the word incurable. So they went to work searching for a cure. To be certain, they have not found all of the answers to that disease, but they are well on their way. We are deeply indebted to those scientific doubters. And whether we realize it or not, the same holds true in the spiritual realm. For example, take the old law of retribution, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. That law was the norm of social justice and personal ethics. But Jesus doubted it. There was a popular belief that the Jews were the superior race and religion, and that Gentiles and Samaritans were excluded from God's mercy. Jesus doubted that. We are benefactors of the faith and spiritual insights of Jesus himself. The truth is that Jesus arrived at his faith, at least in part, by the avenue of courageous doubt. It is worth noting that Jesus did not rebuke Thomas for his disbelief. There was room in his fellowship for the honest doubter. 
If there is someone who is watching today who is struggling with doubt, don't be discouraged. We all have doubts. In fact, the strongest faith of the church has always been hammered out on the hard anvil of doubt leading to faith. The bottom line is this. We need to be honest with our doubts. We need to use them as an avenue to faith and not as an escape from faith. Thomas did that. He wanted to know the truth. At first he said that he'd never believe it until he saw for himself. But having seen, he believed. More than believing in the resurrection, he committed his life to the risen Christ. Now the real test of the nature of doubt is revealed in what it produces. For some, it is an intellectual game. For others, it is an excuse for remaining uncommitted. For others, it is a serious attempt to know the truth in order that they might dedicate their lives to that truth. Thomas belonged to the latter group. We can be grateful for him. He has encouraged many of us, an honest person who found faith through doubting. Together now, let us profess the faith that we all share. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven and earth, and earth of, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Humbly now let us present to God our special petitions. For Pope Francis and all leaders throughout the church as they bear witness to the great mercy of God through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the peace of our risen Lord throughout all the world, especially in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Iran. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For healing for all who are sick and for all those who treat them and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all newly initiated Christians, as the new life of their faith inspires and strengthens the faith of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those whose faith is tenuous, for those who have no community to call their own, that during this jubilee year of mercy, they may see the face of divine mercy through us, find a home among us, and grow stronger in their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, dispel the darkness of our minds and hearts and lead us to true and lasting faith in you. We make this prayer in the Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen.
And let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world, by dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, have none to for full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. For you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Stephen, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done, done, on earth as as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And And lead lead us us not into into temptation, temptation, but deliver deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you You take take away away the the sins sins of the world. world. Have Have mercy mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am am not not worthy worthy that you you should should enter enter under under my my roof. roof but But only only say say the the word, word, and my my soul soul shall be healed. healed. Body of Christ. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. We walk by faith and not by sight. No gracious words we hear from him who spoke as none spoke. But we believe him near. We may not touch his hands and sight, nor follow where he Yet in his promise we rejoice and cry, my Lord and God. We have our Lord.